I'm Patrick Durkin from the Wellness Enterprise, and I'm here with our special guest, Nico Martins, today. Nico, thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome, Patrick. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's an exciting time. So we're going to talk about the, um, the Cosmic Tower, and um, Jen is going to support us with the Zoom controls. So Jen, thank you for being here and supporting that. And um, yeah, you know, I just went to a conference this this past weekend and there were like 1,500 people there and they all want a better way of life for humanity and made me realize how happy I am that I'm participating with the Cosmic Tower because I see that this technology scales to meeting the problems of our era and to changing the energy um, for the world. Um, Nicole, thanks for being here and having your video on. It's always sweet when people are, are present in that way. Um, nice, nice to have community here. And thank you all for being here, whether your video is on or not. We're really, really appreciative that you're here because this is a community-based experience. Like Nico and Jen and I can go put every dollar we have into Cosmic Towers and it's not going to change the world. But if we all put a little bit in and put Cosmic Towers everywhere it is. So we're going to dig into why we're so excited about this and what the technology is. And I have a list of questions prepared, but you do not need to wait for me to exhaust them. If you have a question, you can just raise your hand. And um, Nico is, uh, is ready, willing, and able to take all comers with all questions. So it doesn't matter what you got to ask. Um, we, would love to, um, we would love to answer it. So with that said, Let's start out with something simple and basic, Nico. Why would somebody want to have the Cosmic Tower in their life? Well, I mean, first of all, that comes to the question, like, why is it so difficult to maintain our health today, right? And, and one of the things Harold really stresses is that we basically live in a microwave, right? So if you put an egg in a of a chicken in a microwave for one second, you can no longer create life because the radiation of the microwave, it causes friction by breaking the water structures. So in the process of heating up your food, you're also killing all the life force in it, right? That's why I should never put anything in a microwave. Now, unfortunately, our whole world is being turned into a microwave because all the 5G, all the radiations, they all have a similar effect like a microwave, which is gently being dialed up. So from a pure personal point of view, I would say if you care about health on all levels of your being, you have to create an environment where you're not constantly being bombarded with this radiation, right? Because you can eat something that's toxic to your body and then, well, you know, you, you cleanse and it's gone later. But with this radiation, it's a nonstop attack on the integrity, right, of our, of our structure, of the waters in our body. So in my opinion, the world we live in now, if you do not address that issue, that constant bombardment, you're going to have a real, you know, difficult time to maintain your health, even let alone to regain your Health. So that's the individual aspect. But then let's face it, you know, on a global scale, right? I mean, we're killing the planet with this, with this stuff. And this is all about creating a new grid. Everybody is talking about the ascension and we're going to a different level. I have my own opinion on that. Listen, nobody's going to come save us in that sense. It's going to be up to us to build that new world. And that starts with a new energy grid so there i think we were always meant to be stewards of this planet and nature and we've become cannibals right we have be, we've been consuming nature and it's time for us to take our responsibility back as co-creators and be those stewards of nature again because so many people have their own individual like i want this I want a fancy car. I want a house. Well, guess what? If we do not address this issue five to 10 years from now, you know, you can sit on all the cash you want, but we don't have a world to live in. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, we, we've talked recently about the idea of um, fighting over deck chairs on the Titanic. It's like, yeah. you, know, you can have a fancy car and a fancy house, but 
if this planet is going to to a, a termination of our species, it's not going to matter uh, what kind of car you're driving in on the last day. So, um, yeah, some great points there. So let's get at like the the base level of what the cosmic tower creates. Right, it's a Taurus spin. So let's you know let's not step over this this very basic building block. Week. What is a Taurus spin, and how does it impact life when one is harmoniously living in a Taurus spin? Well, everything in this universe, if you look at the energetics of it, is a toroidal field, all the way from the atom up to the universe itself. Now, if you see a galaxy, you see the disk, right? Because we pay attention to matter in our world. Like, if it's not physical, it doesn't exist, right? But most of you know that there's an entire energetic system in the subtle layers that's actually at the base of the manifestation of the physicality that we see in the, in the, in the center of this disk. And the toroidal field is basic to all of life. If you go to heart mat and you look at the field of, of a heart, it's a toroidal field, right? If you look at, at the field of a human being, it's a, it's a toroidal field. So this is one of the reasons that toroidal field, the whole, I mean, I've, I have the same degree as Harold, right? I'm a, you know, I'm a master's in electromechanical engineering. Went to college. Nobody ever told me about the royal field. <laughs> this has been kept from us because it, it, it is the secret, right? One of the secrets to come back in touch with our true nature, but also to, to a lot of the resolutions of the, of the challenges that we face in our in our world today. So the best way to describe a toroidal field is like the donut shape that you're used to, right? And you want to see that in in three dimensions, that shape. So that that's a that's basically the, the toroidal field. Right? Yeah. So it's it's at the heart of like there's there's little ones inside of us, right? And then yep. there's there's big there's big ones all right at the galaxy level. So they they're already existing in nature are they also getting distorted in this world of pollution? Like what, what happens to them? Why, why do we want to create this type of toroidal field? Yes, so, and this is one of the things that Harold talks about. If you go look, for example, at, at the total amount of energy you have, I think it was Ulrich Warnke or one of the German professor that actually uh, figured out that you get 20% or so of your energy from food, but then the other 80% comes from your resonance with the toroidal field of the earth. So in an ideal world where you live in nature and when all your chakras or your energy systems, whatever it is that your belief is, where they're completely unblocked, there's no blockages and there's no distortion like radiation, we have a much larger lifespan because we get that energy from the earth, from the resonance. It's kind of like you look at Russian dolls, right? Imagine Russian dolls all the way from the atom level nested within each other. And each and and one Russian doll is supported by the other. Right. So that's that's kind of a metaphor that you could see um, display out in our world. Uh, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, okay, so the idea of scalar waves has been coming up a lot and understanding, you know, what are scalar waves and then how do we neutralize different scalar waves with in like the intense ones that we might fear the most like radioactivity. So can you talk about what scalar waves are and how to neutralize them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So most of us know about the wave traveling like this, right? That's what most of has most of us have been taught. Now, if you take a string and you move it like that, the vibration will travel through the string. You could call that a transversal wave, right? Because the, the deflection of the wave is, is not in the direction that the wave is going. Now, if you take the same string and you pull it, the tug is like immediately on the other side, right? You could look at that as being um, a scalar wave, a wave that travels longitudinally. And this is why 
it's so difficult to address certain issues like radiation, for example, because they are um, scalar waves. So a good example of like canceling out a traditional, let's say a sound wave is like your Bose or whatever head, you know, noise canceling headphones. What you do is you have a wave of sound that goes like this. When you can predict that, you create the opposite wave and it cancels out. Now, a scalar wave is much more difficult with like radioactivity because it also travels in the other plane. So you need an opposite wave to counter that in a completely different plane, which are uh, the healthy, healthy scalar waves like a cosmic tower produces. Mm -hmm. And awesome. there's so much, and for those that are interested and go deeper into this, that's a rabbit hole all in itself. In, in scalar waves, I mean, Nikola Tesla knew about scalar waves over a century ago. And yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot that, that you can, can dig in there. But basically what's important to know is that the more difficult issues like radiation and all that, you really need a scalar field that's healthy to balance that. And is the Cosmic Tower a healthy scalar field? Yes. Great. Just like to make it real clear for people, especially me. <laughs> that's, and it's the scalar. It's, it, that's why it's like, for example, if you have a Cosmic Tower, traditionally people would expect the tower is sitting here so the closer I am, the stronger the effect. It's not like that with scalar waves. Like a big tower can have its field and the field can be the same strength all the way until it reaches this range, right? Because the dynamics are, are different than what we know from, from the traditional waves that we've been told. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks for all who've continued to join us after we started, we're, we're happy that you're here. And the format of today's call is question and answer with Nico. I prepared some questions to get us rolling, but if you have a question that gets sparked by something he says and you wanna jump in, you're welcome to do so. You don't need to wait till the end. And there will be time at the end for anybody who, who has questions um, to, to go ahead and get in there. So just jump in whenever you want. Um, my next question, uh, Nico, is what's inside the Cosmic Tower and how does it work? Yeah, so, in, and most of you that have seen a picture of the Cosmic Tower, you've not seen a power cord hanging off of it. Neither does your body have a power cord coming off of it that you plug in every night <laughs> to get your life force. Neither does the tree in your garden because nature has its own way to, to, to bring energy in and to pull in energy. So if you look at the cosmic tower, most people know the outer part of it, which is maple wood. So you basically have a box. And then we get that question a lot. What about the glass balls and the, there's a pure, pure decorative. They do not have a function, right? That's the outer part of it. Now in the inner part, what you have is you have two glass containers, one at the top and one at the bottom and a crystal in the center. Now in these glass containers, healing waters are put, and this is a very special blend of healing water that has the full range of light. If you look at light, the rainbow spectrum, being the whole spectrum, I mean, a big part of the spectrum of the physical spectrum of our reality, imagine all of those frequencies being in that water. Now, this water is not like your tap water at house, at, at your house. This water is Fort Face water, and this is the Gerald Pollock work. And basically what it comes down to is that when you put water in a, in a Fort Face, it gets very different properties than liquid water or water in a gas form or in a solid form. It becomes like a liquid crystal. And you get a hexagonally struck, an hexagonal structure in the water, which then allows us to hold charge, to hold electricity. So the water in the cosmic tower is in a forward phase, meaning that you have to look more of it as a, a ginormous reservoir of energy, of, of a plasma, of a cold plasma. Now, we have that at the top and at the bottom. And then the top one is basically informed. 
to start spinning clockwise. So it starts spinning clockwise. At the bottom, starts spinning counterclockwise. So you have two opposite charges that start rotating. And then this toroidal field opens up. Now in the center is where there is a portal, which is where you basically get an access point to the zero point. Um, many of you probably know about portals, but basically these are places, these are access points to other dimensional energies. And from there then, once that is created, in the center in that crystal, uh, there's a soul attached to it, which we have talked about to, to regulate the energy. We can go more into detail later, but basically in the center is where that access point is to the zero point. This is why the cosmic tower does not require the grid or you to bar borrow the power source externally, because once that toroidal field is created, there's a continuous throughput of new and higher dimensional energy like happens within our own bodies, right? Fantastic. Um, okay, so we've got this, you know, highly charged water and this crystal and this spin and the cosmic tower neutralizes radiation and EMFs. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, here's the challenge with anything that's toroidal field related. There is equipment to measure that. And especially the Russians have done a lot of research around that. Now, in the Western world, like it's really hard to get your hands on this equipment because they know if you're messing with toroidal fields, you're playing with free energy. If you're playing with free energy, you are basically robbing somebody's multi-trillion piggy bank. Right. So it can be, as far as a direct measurement, you need special equipment to properly measure a toroidal field. You cannot stand there with your little magneto, you know, your magnetic meter and say, like, I don't see a reduction in my, no, it doesn't work that way. Right. You're basically trying like a simple example, like, can you measure the entire dimensions of a house in one plane? No, you cannot. You need some different equipment. This is the same. So in that sense, um, unless we get that equipment to measure it, we, you know, we have that available, um, then most of the measurements are, are indirectly, meaning you have an environment without the cosmic tower. You, you do a measurement on something you can physically quantify put the cosmic tower in and measure again. So a lot of tests that are done like that are three electrons in a room you measure it has a certain level. You don't change anything in the room. You put a cosmic tower in for a few hours, you measure again, you see there's 10 or 20 times higher depending on the size of the tower. Another example that you're more familiar with Patrick is you take tap water and you expose it to a process like running it through an aqua energizer, or in this case, you, you take a snapshot before you look at the water crystals, you look at their structure, which tells you a lot about the energy of the water and how healthy it is. Now you take that same water, and in our case, you put it on a cosmic tower for three minutes, and then you, you check the water crystals again, you can see the difference. Then there also is, a lot of people, like if you might know about GDV, about other technologies where you can measure the health of somebody, right? There's been measurements done beforehand where you look at the aura, right? You expose somebody, put them in the field of a cosmic tower for a few hours, you measure again, and you see a, a lot of the energetic blockages have started to resolve. So there's a lot of um, ways to, to do that, which unfortunately, for most EMF products or for more most spiritual products right now, you're gonna run into that into that challenge, right? And then for me, there is the most important one, which is your own consciousness and your own awareness. That ultimately, to me, it's about my best advice, and that's how it was for me. I experienced a two and a half meter cosmic tower, and I knew like right there, right then, I could feel what was going on in my body. So when you get to a certain level of technology, 
all you can really measure it with is your 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 own consciousness in a sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you came around to that because you know a lot of us have been conditioned to forget how how um, how discerning the the body is and our consciousness is and. You know, my journey over the last 10 years has been one of going to and relying on teachers and needing others to translate life experience for me to feeling and discerning for myself. Mm -hmm. And I now have like the utmost confidence that my body shows me whether something's better or not. And, you know, I, 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 I met this wonderful skeptic at the conference this past weekend. He was just this most beautiful man. And we spent hours together, actually. And the gift, one of the gifts that I gave him, he gave me many too, but the was better is better. And so he could come up with 40 questions, ask about anything, but he could tell you right at the beginning that he feels better in the presence of a certain behavior or tool or whatnot. And it's like, if you feel calm and you feel right and you feel centered, what, what else are you looking for? Like that's everything. That, that's why we want all these things to begin with. So, so I, I really like that as I've immersed my life in structured water and subtle energies, I have been rewarded with sensitivity that just wasn't there before. And I can now take one breath and center and connect and know whether something is better or not. So I'm glad, I'm glad you got to that one. That one's, that one's pretty important to me. Yeah, because it's it's big part of why we're so enslaved as a species, right? Because we've given all our power away to people in a white coat or that use difficult terms that most of us don't understand to hide that they don't really understand it themselves. But, yeah. right, because you go and, for example, like 5G, most of us that are sensitive know you can even come close to these devices. You don't feel good. So I don't care that there's 100 studies done that tell you that it's safe. Right? Do you trust that by the people that bring out these devices? I mean, so I think testing only goes so far. The only message I have for people, be your own authority, be your own master, have the experience, go sit in, in the field. And if it's not for you, fine, right? And like, we have to get back in this habit to where we start trusting ourselves. Yeah. Um, and that we start changing the world from there. Like I, I went through this in the financial industry, you know, I had a very successful 18 year career and it ended around the time that derivatives blew up. And, you know, we were sold the derivatives and the derivatives were underlying all the bank portfolios and the pension portfolios and nobody understood how they worked. And, you know, we kept having what they call black swan events, like things that should happen once in a generation or, or once in an entire lifetime, were happening multiple times in a couple of years. And everybody knew it felt awful, but we didn't know what to do about it. At least in this case, we're empowered to do something about it. Like I wanna create harmony in the space that I live in. And um, that's, um, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, by the way, thank you to people who are typing questions in the chat. Um, I did pick one up there and put it on the bottom of my list. So I've got you. And um, if you put them there, I want to make sure that they get fed in. And you guys are welcome to ask them live too. Um, okay, so we've heard um, Harold Tears, um, the inventor of the Cosmic Tower, speak about electricity stored in, in living organisms. Can you address that topic um, about electricity? Yeah, absolutely. What, what Harold and Harold and I have a very similar path. We were both traditional electromechanical engineers that had a burnout in the corporate world that lost our health. And we went on this search. And then we came to realize that a lot of the new science, a lot of the science that actually explains why we were not healthy, it's just been suppressed. That's just the reality of it. And one of those is what Harold calls a, a simple model of health. Meaning if you have an alive organism that's alive right now, and one second later it's declared dead, what is the difference? Because all the same vitamins are there, everything chemically is the same. Well, basically what Harold, the conclusion he came to is that simply your electricity is gone, your life forms 
like an EKG, right? Do people think an ECG? They're, they measure. They measure that electricity. So basically, your, your charge is gone. That's the simple answer, Patrick. It's electricity that animates the body. Mm -hmm. And where is it gone from? Like, where is the electrical charge? So the electrical charge, and this comes back to the Gerald Pollock work on fourth face of water. So all like the water in a healthy living organism is mostly structured. Why? Because if you have structured hexagonal water, like I said, it becomes a plasma. So you can look at it as a ginormous cloud of charge. And the way water is able to hold that charge is only when it's hexagonally structured, like a beehive. There is a reason you see that geometry everywhere in nature, because therein lies the principle of that free energy. Because what has Gerald Pollock found out that if you structure water hexagonally like that, you get a free electron. A free electron is, is charged. So he basically said, as far as health is concerned, Imagine the fourth phase water in our body being the battery that can store the charge. Uh, so then we want to answer the question, A, why do we like lose the charge and how can we regain our charge? So the regaining of the charge is true free electrons from grounding, from eating healthy foods, taking in in the charge. But the first thing that needs to happen is we got to make sure that the battery is not continuously degraded. And that brings us back to radiation being, you know, our biggest challenge right now, because 24 seven, it's like the battery is degrading as long as that field is like breaking the structures of the waters. So number one, we got to stop the continuous assault on our battery and then repair our battery which is create hexagonal structures again in the body so we can store more charge. And then we have to take that charge in. And, yeah. and, and the Cosmic Tower helps us with, with all of those aspects, which for me makes it really, really unique. Yeah, that's great. So um, speaking of it being unique, that segues perfectly into the question of, is the Cosmic Tower the same as a structured water device or is it different? Are they complementary? What can you say about that? Um, to me, a, a cosmic tower is in a league of its own. And you know, Patrick, I've, I've had structured water for over a decade, but I'm also looking for the next next solution to, to, to take it even further. So the, the cosmic tower like does what the structured water device does and then some. So imagine the best way I can describe it is that um uh, you know about the ether that we all, you know, Nikola Tesla, this is one of the things that kept from us that we all live in a sort of a fluid called the ether. Now imagine water and, and ether being equivalents at a different level. So the, the structured water device will structure the water. Imagine the cosmic tower even structuring all the ether around us, the basic substance that everything in this reality is made up of. Right, so it, it goes much further because the, the structured water device, you can run water through it, but what about the water that's in the air? All right, so one of the things that Cosmic Tower does, it get, cuts up the water structures in the air and structures them hexagonally, thus raising the amounts of free ions in the air. The other thing, a cosmic tower does one of the challenges today is you can have the perfect organic apple full of charge. Then what happens? It gets harvested. Now the connection to the earth is gone. So a typical food within six to eight hours, it will no longer have any charge left. Because to make matter even worse, to make matters even worse, that apple is then transport and is continuously being bombarded with radiation and what have you and all the structures are broken so by the time you take a bite of it there's no charge i think that's one of the real issues these days why people want to eat so much 
because the body's like, hey, I need the electricity. I'm not getting it. All these foods are dead that we're putting in the body. And then people with the best intentions that go to the store and buy organically, you still don't get there. The, if you could like straight from your garden, pick and eat, right? That's how we are designed, but that's not realistic in our world. So the beauty with the cosmic tower is because anything you put it in the field, it's going to restructure the waters in there. That also the food that you've gotten that was dead, that lost its charge, it, it becomes healthier for you again. I don't know about you, Patrick, but for me, when I miss my cosmic tower now because I'm in San Diego, I've been without it for over a month. When I'm in that field, I don't eat much. I drink, I drink water, but other than that, I feel really nourished and energetic uh, without having to take in so much food. Mm, that's great. Um, you know, I've been learning more about sacred geometry since the mm -hmm. Cosmic Tower came around. And, and one of the things that I don't have a full handle on it, but, but I've seen that makes some sense to me is when you think about the torus spin, you picture the shape of the apple. In the center of the apple, that's a vortex. Yep. Right? And so we've been focused for 10 years on these structured water devices that are vortexing water. Yep. And now we're getting the whole apple in our sacred geometry. Yes. And, and there's two things that I've noticed, um, which is one, when I focus on the tower and I, and I focus on feeling that spin, mm -hmm. it feels like my whole world gets in the spin. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, um, as I've been talking about it, a bunch of people have revealed to me that their methodology for meditation is visualizing themselves in the Taurus. Yep. And it turns out a lot of people knew that like, well, before I did, it's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's a, that, that's a great point. Like anytime you align with what I call a true geometry, a geometry in nature, automatically you you create more resonance and you're going to get more energy, right? Yeah, yeah it's it's, um, it's beautiful. So we've got all this um, this negative um, electromagnetic pollution. Mm -hmm. and people are are you know going around and there's you know dozens of companies now that you can buy an EMF solution from and. And it's confusing to know, like, how do I pick this one? How do I pick that one? And so I, I imagine um, through some testing that I've seen and experienced that some of them are really effective and some of them are not effective at all. Mm -hmm. But could you comment on whether if I went and bought the best EMF protection, whether that's going to scale to actually helping me solve the problems that I have in my life and the world that I live in? Well, for me, and I do not know every single EMF device out there, right? So I'm generalizing here, but for most of them, you can compare them to allopathic medicine, in my opinion, which is we take the symptom away, but we do not resolve the root core issue. Mm -hmm. And to me, there is, when I look for solutions, I always look to what, what resembles nature the closest. And that's always what I go look at. What is nature's principle? That's why that's how I found the alkaline energizers. It's the vortexing principle of nature running and around rocks and being vortexed. And the same for the cosmic power. So when I see something that I have to plug into an energy grid, to me, that's not a solution on many levels. Why? First of all, I'm plugging into what I call a dirty energy grid. Second of all, I'm supporting the people <laughs> that are keeping us subjugated or, you know, I'm helping the grid because I'm consuming from it, even though it's like to get out of the issues that the grid creates. You see what I mean? It makes no sense that you're going to use what creates the problem to alleviate the issue, right? And so what if the... If, you know, what if the grid goes down and then you could say, well, we don't have a lot of like the EMF problems anymore. Well, we still have, we we'll still have them, right? In geopathic and in other forms. But for me, the biggest difference, and I've tried many of the EMFs, and I've sold some, but the biggest difference with the cosmic tower for me is that it's not enough to just harmonize or take away the negative effects. 
we need an influx of new energy into our world. We're at an energy deficit and that energy keeps eroding away. So that's why I say most solutions are compared to allopathic medicine, like, hey, you know, I have a, I have a cancer. Oh, let's just cut it out, right? You're healed now. No, you haven't addressed the mental underlying issue in the subtle body. You haven't addressed the emotions. You haven't addressed, you know, the energetic issues. So to me, it doesn't get to the root of the issue. The, the Cosmic Tower is a more holistic solution. We're just not, hey, here's a device you wear on your body and you're protected because guess what? When the whole rest of the energy grid goes, yeah, you can be protected, but it's not gonna help you. So the Cosmic Tower for me on a more systemic level helps alleviate the issue, which is building a new natural um, earth and, and energy grid. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a great point. And, you know, we're used to thinking about protecting our families and taking care of ourselves. And, you know, I see more and more people where the definition of protecting my family is my family is the species. And that is that is your family. Right. Um, and if humans sorry. can't thrive on this planet, then I can't thrive on this planet. Yeah, we have to get out of this I, me, mine mentality where if I'm protected, everything's good. No. We as a species have to take our accountability, right, and work together to bring a solution, not only for us personally. I mean, think about the bees. Think about the whole cycle of life. That's one of the things I noticed in Belgium. When I had my cosmic towers, within a few days, way more bees we're, we're on the property. And that to me is always a good sign because I look at nature, how nature responds. How many times at the cabin did I have a deer come up that was really curious and wanted to see what was in there? Uh, and I like to watch nature's response to these, to these technologies. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's important. Um, okay, so um, ley lines. We've got these ley lines that are in the earth, right? And... Mm -hmm. I think there's some theory that the cosmic tower can um, transform, support the harmful energies and, and what's going on with ley lines. Can you talk about that topic? Yeah, I can. And one of the things Harold talks about is that we have to come to a base level, whether it's a physical toxin, whether it's a electromagnetic toxin, right? But, but he says you can all boil it down to to one simple principle is what's the difference between a poison and a vitamin? At the base level, Harold says the electron spin on what gives you life, like the vitamins, is, is a clockwise spin. And what takes, what robs your life force is a counterclockwise. Just imagine a portal where, imagine the zero point. Clockwise movement, energy comes out of the zero point and is being put into the environment. Counterclockwise, it's getting, it's, it's getting sucked in, right? So we have to, we have to um, get out of this mentality where we divide everything so much. That's different from this, but that's different from this. No, at the basic level, everything is energy. So if we address it at the most basic level, it, it doesn't matter um, what the challenge is in the physical world because it all manifests based on same principles, which in this case, you could imagine the cosmic power at the bottom, like a vacuum, pulling everything in. That's life taking, running it through the zero point and then radiating it out like the sun as beneficial life force giving energy. So whether it's 5G, whether it's geopathic stress, like you alluded to, or ley lines, energetically, if it's within the field of a cosmic tower, it, it will be it will be at least neutralized. Such a such an important answer. You know, it, it speaks to why I left a career that was all about money. You know, 18 years as a financial advisor, I made a million dollars in a year and you know, many hundreds of thousands of dollars in other years. And I left and I walked away. And part of the reason that I walked away is that the system had become so bastardized 
by the structures and the governors and the, and the ruling that it had lost any semblance of sense, right? The idea that, that, you know, let's say we're growing a company and we offer people the opportunity to buy shares in it and participate and we pay them for being a part of that. Like that was the underlying principle, but it got so lost in these complicated things. And I had to leave because there was no way I was going to be able to make sense of that or influence it for the better. And I didn't know that God had a better plan for me. But now when we speak of this and you talk about just simply is energy building life or is it making it more chaotic? And that we have an opportunity to take all of our energy, our life force, and put it into things that build life. Yes. I, I can't do anything else with my life force. Like that, that's what I'm here for. Exactly. You know, and that, that guy at that conference that I that I mentioned in the other question, you know, what he taught me is that who I am is that I look for where man has taken something and made it complicated and man-made, therefore degrading. And I look for what's the original version that God intended or our creator intended. And I look to restore it, right? So that's why I'm involved with the Cosmic Tower. That's why I'm building a community based around love. And that's why I help people to understand structured water. Yeah. And I think that that's a very important important point, Patrick, because sometimes I get the comic, uh, comment say like, oh, Cosmic Tower is a expensive for example not to me if i can influence some for 600 miles say for 15 16 17 thousand dollars to me that's peanuts but let's look at it the other way around look at the average person the average family and you add up your cell phone bill. you add up your internet you add up all your wireless devices your computers everything that not only kills you but also kills your environment, I dare to argue that you spend easily more than a hundred grand over a lifetime on these technologies that are not only killing you, but are also killing your environment. So for me, the least you could do is like give 10% back to the solution, right? I also use a cell phone. I'm using a, a laptop right now, right? And I know that it's like detrimental, but... We we need to we need to support the solution. Um, yeah, right on. So, you know, some people don't have access to finances at the same level of others. You know, we can all chip away and make payments and and do things. But for some people, um, you know, it's it's heavy lifting to be able to afford things that are a thousand or two thousand or or more dollars. So, for the people who say. You know, I'm not going to pay attention to the Cosmic Tower because it's just too expensive. It's out of my league. What would you say to those people? Well, I've well invested over a million in my own development, right? And ultimately, we spent money on so many things. And where there's a will, there's a way. If you're really serious and you want to help yourself and you want to help your environment, you're you're going to find a way. First thing I'm going to ask you is like, well, do you have a thousand dollar cell phone? Do you have a this? Do you have a that? Right. What made that more important than your own health and well-being and that of the planet? Yeah. Awesome. And um, I want to add a little bit of an answer to my own question, um, which is um, crowdsource it. Right. <laughs> if, if you believe in the technology and you see that it transformed the earth and it gives us a chance to actually save our planet and our species, then put your energy behind getting a big tower in your neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. We're excited to announce today that we've been working on the pricing and the shipping and the duty and all of the things that it's going to cost to bring cosmic towers in the US. And for everybody that's bought a, a, a system already, we're going to be sending you a, a refund of the portion of what you've already paid. And for everybody that hasn't purchased yet, the prices are coming down a little bit. Um, we've been able to um, find some ways to be a little bit more efficient than we thought we could be and to uh, buy more and ship them together than we thought we could and get some economy of scale there. So um, the, the prices are on the wellnessenterprise.com in the Cosmic Tower product. And I won't go through each of them now, but, but everybody who bought previously is gonna be getting a, a refund of the difference. 
And um, we just were able to solidify that pricing today. So just give us a little time to catch up with processing those. Um, but, um, you know, if, if you see that this makes a difference, just the price of the 220, the two meter one is $16,500. So raise that in your neighborhood. And that one device is going to cover 500 miles of people. So you can get people um, all around the block and the next block and the next block and the next block and the next block, you know, do whatever it takes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and that, that's a very important aspect you, you're bringing up, which is the community that we work together. We're just not looking for solutions for ourselves. We are bringing a solution as a community to an issue that, that all life on this planet is impacted by. And if you go look in Europe where the deployment has been going on for about two and a half years, I mean, they've deployed well over 700 of the large towers. And I've seen a lot of those initiatives in Holland where there is crowd funders, where communities, uh, you know, if you have 160 people, everybody chips in 100 bucks you get your whole community covered to me that is peanuts compared to to either other solutions but also to the amount of money that's just being spent on destroying life on this planet yeah yeah for sure okay um crowdsourcing is powerful and you know really what we're doing is we're crowdsourcing a solution for the energy waves that we all live in but crowdsourcing is powerful more way more than just on an economical level. Crowdsourcing is us deciding to work together to co-create a new world. And then what you have with the synergy of that and people all getting behind something that supports life, uh, what you get, you know, the whole is much more than the sum of the parts. Yeah. Yeah, we need a we need a healthy planet to live on and to be a healthy species, and we have to create it together. Yeah. Um, so, with that said, there's a question about um, the size of the towers, and mm -hmm. if there are, uh, if somebody orders a small tower and there's no big towers in the area, um, how long would the energy in the small tower last? Is the way this person asked the question, mm -hmm. um, and then somebody else asked a question about like how do you quantify the impact of the cosmic towers. So maybe we can look at those two in the same kind of context. Yeah, absolutely. So remember, we are not going to a regular doctor and getting one pill that fixes the issue, right? So it's basically, we have to build a new grid, which, which is gonna take time. Now, how the cosmic tower works is that you have the large, towers and what they do is they do a lot of the heavy lifting for a big area to where they heal nature to where they uh, deal with the radiation and all that but what's more important to understand is that it's it this technology is is conscious right and it is a team effort for a better word so if a small tower, for example, is in an area where it's under a lot of load, let's say your extreme example in Manhattan, in a condo, well, you have your one positive cosmic tower, and then you have all the 5G, all the smart meters, everything around it. So what is going to happen is, yeah, it's not going to be able to manage the entire load that is present there. This is where the big towers come in because the big towers can channel the energy to smaller towers, right? And, and help them. And also if any challenges they have or for whatever reason, somebody hits them with an energy weapon to, to try to destroy the tower, the bigger towers can repair them. And it's like one big family. So what is gonna happen like the worst case scenario you get a small tower just by itself it's not going to be able to handle the load so you will get an effect of it but it's not nearly going to be as powerful as it would be if there were some bigger towers in the area that would support the, the small tower 
can we throw this in an online calculator or a tool to calculate what it would take in that sense? No. But most of you on this call, you're very familiar with dowsing and you tuning into things for yourself. So that's one way you could measure what what size would do in a particular in a particular area. Right. That's great. You know, I always look for um, parallels when I'm trying to understand something, and I I just had this um, this image of my consciousness journey over the last 25 years, and I thought about Tony Robbins. Talk about somebody who's like a big tower. I mean, that guy's like a a giant among men, right? And along the course of my first decade how Tony stands in the world and teaches people a positive mindset and how to be powerful with themselves. He as a tower was constantly, uh, I was thinking of him and getting energy from his teachings. And so I'd still be like out in the world being, you know, little Patrick trying to figure things out in his little world, but sometimes I would lean back in to the teachers. Mm -hmm. And so um, for me, that's an idea of this, of this principle. So, um, okay, um, getting like, just kind of really, um, I'm down to my last two questions. So if anybody has a question, great time to put it in the chat or, um, or go ahead and raise your hand if you wanna ask live. And these are two pretty simple questions. So there's three dots on the front of the cosmic tower. There's, um, you know, some blue glass. What are those? Yeah, that's as I mentioned earlier, they're just cosmetic. It's just for style. They don't have any functionality. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And um, how do you take care of a cosmic tower? This is my last question, guys. So first of all, how do you install a cosmic tower? And uh, what's important? Well, it's as simple as taking it out of the box and setting it up right. There are some considerations as where you want to put it. And I've put that all on the product page uh all the bullet points but i'll go through some of the let important just, things that i just guide people there when nico says the product page on the wellnessenterprise.com in the shop there is a cosmic tower product and in there there's a bunch of custom tabs that we have where we've put a lot of information that's where nico's referring to okay yes so here's some things that i've that I've noticed and that I've learned. Well, first of all, you want to put it somewhere that there's not a lot of distortion around, right? You're not setting it, you know, on top of your fridge or something, right? So put it in a place where it doesn't have too much like electrical interference and outlets. And then what I've noticed with the smaller towers, they do not, they want to be set kind of at heart level. Right, and you have to take into account the cosmic power. It, it is conscious. You can interact with it. It, it. it is alive. So treat it with respect, like you would any other new best friend or any other life form. Don't go stuff it in a closet under a pile of shoes and expect it to be happy. It'll probably still do its work, right? But when you consciously interact with a technology like this, it becomes exponentially more more powerful. So put it somewhere from my experience on heart level. With the big towers, they'll sit on the floor. You do not want to do that with the smaller towers because one of the things that happens is as it starts working the energy in your room, like a lot of like the dust that you have that creates allergies and all that, it'll drop to the floor. So it doesn't like to sit in its own filth, basically. All right. So so that's important. Now as far as taking care of it, there's not much to be done in the sense of maintenance or whatever. Unless you break it physically, it's just going to continue to work and you can pass it down from generation to generation. Now, on the breaking, there's an obvious caveat here. There are glass containers with Ford Face water inside. Ford Face water is still subject to freezing. So do not put it outside, right? And make sure it's in an environment where the temperature is controlled or don't put it in the desert in 120 degrees, right? So that, that is important and then don't drop it. But other than that, find a beautiful place and you can move it around too and, and interact with it. I let it show you things, ask it questions. To me, it's all about being playful and getting fun with it. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I wanna um, move toward wrapping up with, uh, with a really important point, which is that um, the more inventory we bring into the US and spread out, the more we create the harmonic field before we've even sold the devices. And so our plan is to deploy our capital into the inventory and spread it around as best we can. And the more people who wanna play in that game, the better. So what I want you to know is if you have $100,000 or more, we have investor or supporter opportunities at the 100,000 level and the $250,000 level. And for people who participate in that, it's an opportunity to get the large tower, the, the, um, the 220, um, or even there's a 250 that's only gonna be available to investors. Um, it's an opportunity to get those as compensation for investing. So if you have six figure money and you're interested in supporting this project to go forward, please contact Nico or myself and we'll talk you through the details of that and tell you how it works. Um, in the interim, everybody who purchases their tower now, it's really helpful to us because we're scaling to a level of capital that we've never had to have before. And um, we're gonna work it out no matter what. But if you, can, if you know you're gonna buy and you can put the money in now, we're at the point now where we've configured a 40 foot container of these things and we're ready to bring them into the US and we need to pay for them. So when you pay for it and we pay, we're gonna get those things shipped and it's gonna be a matter of weeks, not months before we get towers into the US. Not like two or three weeks, don't, don't get impatient. Don't, don't get a standard that I can't meet, like keep the expectations low. But if you, do wanna, if you do wanna support the project moving forward, either buy your smaller tower now, just through the wellnessenterprise.com or contact us about investing. And then that will uh, help us to, to get the towers here sooner, so. Yeah, and I'd like to add something to that. And this is one of the reasons why this has taken a while to bring the Cosmic Tower to the US because Harold didn't just want to ship a few small towers without any support. So what we've looked into, and Harold has access to some really high spiritual people, and we've basically looked into what do we need as a basic footprint to open the region in the US to where we can build from. And that's why we had to move with an entire container at once. Like he is able to, to ship the smaller towers to the US, but it's really not cost effective. Like on a 75, he would look at $275 in shipping cost to ship a single one from Germany. Plus you got to pay duty, et cetera. That's why we've put this whole project together, which is to get the big towers in there. So we have the, the right level of support. And yeah, that's important for any new region that, that's being opened up. Yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that point up. And I, you know, I guess that's the perfect point for me to close on is um, we're all in this together. Yeah. And if you have energy or resources to help this project move forward, we are stretching ourselves as fully as we are capable. And if you come and stand next to us and say, I can help um, either by getting a big tower or getting a small tower or by having a supporter six figure investment package um, or maybe getting the word out and inviting more people mm -hmm. or, or, or just praying for us every day. Like everybody plays a part and we're all in this together. And some people are gonna like write the big checks because they've been blessed that way. If that's not you, then bless us in the way that, that you can. And we'll, we'll, we're thankful for everybody that joins ARMS and um, is part of this with us. I'm, I'm deeply appreciative for everybody that's joined today and for everybody that watches this recording in the future. Thank you for your interest in this project. Um, I want an earth and a species in harmony so that we can have a future. And I believe that this scales to that and that's why my energy is behind it. Um, Thank you so much. That, that's it for me. Nico, you got anything in closing? No, thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks for being here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting.